I'm not tech savvy. Good morning, everyone. We had a little good technical morning. problem, <laughs> but we have got it fixed. And we are live with Pastor Jeff Ferguson from his bungalow. Um, <laughs> he's coming to us from Orlando, Florida. And um, he is, we're going to talk about music. We're going to talk about worship. We're going to talk about prayer. We're going to talk about how to I believe every day because he's got a podcast and video series called I believe. But we're just going to kind of get into um, how to take all the world that's around us and learn how to funnel that into an opportunity to worship every day. So, Jeff, yeah. welcome. Thank you. I'm not sure where to look because it's it's uh, broken up here. That's OK. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scoot me back. So we're all right. I'll scoot me back. You scoot you up. I'll scoot me oh. back. <laughs> we'll match on this. At some time. Okay. Yeah. But um, so anyway, um, now you're sideways. You got it. There we go. Make make yourself in the middle. In the middle. There yeah. you go. Perfect. Okay. All right. Hey. There you go. So um, I'm so excited to get to talk to you. We have a mutual friend, Paul yeah. Pitts, the scribe and the scribe yeah. TV. Yes. And um, so Let's talk about, you know, you're in the world of music, you're in the world of worship, you're everywhere, you're doing a lot of wonderful things. Um, but how did you discover music as a way of life and worship? I mean, that's, you've had 4,000 songs recorded by artists, Grammys, Doves, Stellar Awards. I mean, you are doing it. So, Well, how did, I've been nominated several times, well, but I've never won anything. <laughs> Maybe one day, right? Maybe one day, yeah. <laughs> Nominations. Hey, that's pretty good. An honor um, to be nominated. <laughs> there you go. No, well, really so, so how how did God call you to music? Well, music is one aspect of what I do. Probably right. people know me. They they know me more. They probably know my songs more than they know anything else about the ministry that I do. But um, uh, I recorded my first album and started traveling around the world when I was 13 years old. So I've been doing it a long, long, long time. And God has been, God, God has, hold on, let me button this Tom Selleck thing or whatever I'm trying to do. <laughs> uh, so I, I've been, I've been in ministry for a, a long, long time. I'm 54. I'll be 55 in November. So in 55, I celebrate 42 years in ministry. That is amazing. And 13 yeah. years old. Most of us at 13 just wanted to make it through middle school. <laughs> yeah. So, so what happened when I was 12 years old, when I was seven, a Pentecostal pastor adopted me when I was seven years old in Flint, Michigan. And when I was 12, I had a powerful experience with the Lord in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. Wow. And then my dad prayed for me. And, um, and that endued me with power to be a witness for Jesus Christ all wow. over the world and it it literally transformed my life and i you know i i try to make the story non-denominational but it isn't it isn't yeah. it, it, i had a pentecostal experience that transformed my life in the mm -hmm. middle of the night when i was 12 years old and it endued me with power to be a witness just like jesus promised in acts chapter 1 verse 8 and i have been, wow. have been in ministry all the days of my life well beginning the next year since so, wow. uh, uh, yeah. And so I, I sang for the Youth for Christ group, uh, Victorious Christian Life. I sang with Recreation. We recorded an album. Shortly after that, I went with a group called Lamb Project. We toured everywhere. And then after that, when I was 15, I went by myself and uh, began to speak, began to sing. Um, wow. I've recorded. I'm in the middle of my 10th album right now. Uh, and, and locally at my home church in Orlando, Florida, Winter Park, Florida, Calvary, Calvary, Orlando. Uh, if you've been to Orlando, it's that it's kind of an iconic, iconic building here. It's all the mirrored glass cement mm -hmm. I four, um, and it's the Assemblies of God Church. And I have been I'm the choir director there, and I'm the minister for fifty and over, and I'm the minister for widows, and and then I That's have yeah, and then right here in the bungalow, I have a. A monthly gathering called Bungalow Worship. It's online. We have a band in here. We cater it. It's wonderful. And I have a I whole lot of people that help support all the ministries that we do. I'm also a ghostwriter for ministers. And I'm a. For songs or for sermons? For books. 
books. I yeah. see. Yeah, that's hard work. I know it's a lot of hard. work. Yeah, and and then I do my online ministry and and television things. So I'm excited about what God is doing. I feel very optimistic and hopeful for what is next. You know, this COVID thing has has caused a lot of us in ministry to have to analyze how we do things and maybe look at doing things a little differently or going back to the root foundation of who we are in him. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's been a great time to really reevaluate. You hope that people have taken the opportunity to really reevaluate. And as I like to say, get your life on purpose because yeah. there's a lot of distractions out there. And yeah. so, but I want to go back to that moment you had with God because you knew it was God at an early age. And I think sometimes we have encounters with God and we don't know maybe that God is trying to reach into our soul and call us into something. And I think people struggle with that. I mean, what's that God? And, and you even talk about this, how to hear from God. I do. So, yes, that? yes, I did. Yeah. So I think people struggle with how to hear from God, especially in the world. It's so noisy and it's so loud. And it's, you know, this like this black cloud of be afraid of all of these things. Yeah. But yet God is trying to call out his people and speak to his people. So how do you tell people, listen for God and here is the best way to do that and actually hear? Yeah. So I think that I think there, um, I think there's several ways to hear from the Lord. The first time I ever heard from God was that event, that moment in when I was 12 years old, when I had that experience with the Lord at 3 a.m. in the middle of the night. It's the first time that I really talked to God, and it was the first time I ever heard God talking. And at that time, it was from like out here, because mm -hmm. I don't, the Spirit of God did not yet live in my body. Mm -hmm. you know, so I kind of heard it from out here. He spoke to me in my thoughts. I didn't hear it with these ears, but I heard it and I knew it was God. But like there are so many examples in scripture where God speaks to people, you mm -hmm. know, Saul before he became Paul. Samuel is one when he was a child. Uh, Moses, uh, you know, God spoke to so many people all throughout the Bible. God has always spoken to people. Mm -hmm. And um and so he spoke to my heart. I prayed. I said, God, please help me because I was afraid in the night. Mm. He spoke to my heart and he said, had your dad prayed that you receive the whole armor of God. And I had never even, I wasn't a spiritual kid at all. I'm like, not at all. I did not mm. have conversations with God. I couldn't wait for, I uh, fake sick to not go to church. I was the pastor's son. I didn't want to go, you know, all yeah. those things. And so, but I, I heard him. And I ran into my mom and dad's room at 3 a.m. And I knelt down on dad's side of the bed at the parsonage next door to the church. And I woke my dad up and I said, dad, would you pray? I obeyed God. I said, dad, would you pray that I would receive the whole armor of God? And he laid his hand on my brow. It woke him up because he had never heard me say anything spiritual. Mm -hmm, I bet. He laid his hand on my head and he said, Lord, give little Jeff your whole armor. And out of my belly, immediately, there came, it felt like something hot was coming over my head, but immediately out of my belly, there came these rivers of weeping. Wow. I had never wept. And these rivers of weeping came out of my innermost being. And I just began to weep, weep, weep. And then to be bold and to tell you the truth. And I began to speak in an unknown tongue, in syllables that I did not learn as a child. And that's why when I hear whole doctrines of some of the largest denominations in the world say that God doesn't do that, or that's of the devil, or that's not of God, or that's not for today, that was only for the apostles, or God no longer speaks past the last scripture written. God has been speaking to me and through me since I was a child. And when I heard that after I was an adult, I, I knew it was false doctrine. I knew it wasn't right, no matter how big the denomination is, and no matter how great the men and women of God are who, who represent, I knew that mm -hmm. God speaks personally to people. He never stopped. There's that scripture, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Holy Spirit always points to Jesus. So mm -hmm. if you 
keep truth, if you keep Jesus in the center of your faith, then you're not going to get into false things. But what do you say to people who, because, you know, today's world says, oh, the Bible was back then. I mean, you know, in the in the circles that we run in, yes, people believe the Bible. People believe that, you know, it's true and it's the infallible word of God. But what do you say to someone who's well, not that in tune with the Holy Spirit and and godly things to start yeah. with? OK, I want to hear from God. I mean, where do you where do well, you start? This is not your practice. Let, let, let's first go to um, let's first go to how, when God speaks to our hearts. Then yes. after that moment, I was I was what we call spirit filled. That I was mm-hmm. born again. I, the, the spirit when you Jesus said, "I'm with you," but the day will come when the Father and I will be in you. We'll take yes. the abode in you. And Amen. A born again, believer has the Spirit of God within their body, and mm-hmm. so then it shifted from God speaking from out here to God speaking from within Mm -hmm. that moment on when God spoke to me, it was always within. Now here's the guard. Here's the safety that I did not really have to learn, but I learned later um, after I had already had an ear tuned into the Lord. But, but here's what people need to know. There are sweeping truths in scripture. And if God speaks to your heart and it goes against those sweeping truths in scripture, you know, it's not God. Right. You know, it's yourself. We hear three things. We hear ourselves, our own thinking. We hear from the enemy because he plants thoughts, the battlegrounds, the mind, or we hear from the Holy Spirit that's within us. You know, mm-hmm. so, so those are the, so, so discerning of spirits, mm-hmm. knowing who you're hearing from. Or knowing how when someone else is speaking, knowing if it's them or God mm-hmm. or the enemy, you know. Right. So, so, so that's how you know. Now, scripture to so many people, it's just dead letter, and that's what we think. We think, well, you got to believe this because the Bible says it. Well, they don't have to believe it because they, they don't believe in the Bible. It's right. dead letter to them. But mm-hmm. when the Holy Spirit, who inspired the scripture in the first place, when the Holy Spirit makes that scripture alive, even as believers, we can read that thing 27 times or hear it preached 28 times. But when we hear it spirit infused, it becomes alive and yeah. his word is alive. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so that, it's that's so true. It's the Holy Spirit that makes it alive. Yeah, it's so true. And it's as simple as praying for God to give you the wisdom to hear, you know, give me ears to hear, give me eyes to see, and he will begin to quicken that spirit. So let's talk about some of your favorite songs that you've written because they're Holy Spirit written. I saw a creator back there in your house. Yeah, I have two, two lazy, two lazy dogs behind me. They have, they take over the house and they're like, Uh, Oh good. They're so funny. in In this bungalow. Uh, <laughs> so what are your favorite songs that you've written or what are the ones that have been recorded or are played or down uh, streamed the most? Uh, you know, I had one early on. It was my oh, my second song ever recorded that was pretty big. Uh, are you from Louisiana? You're from Louisiana, right? It was. Yes. No, I'm from from Mississippi, but I live in Louisiana. Oh, okay. Mississippi. Guess what yeah. I got? Can you see that red crock pot over there behind the flowers? Yes. Way over there against the wall. Okay. So I made a Mississippi pot roast. Okay, mm. Mississippi. Oh. I made a Mississippi pot roast last week and I put it in the freezer. I thawed it out. I meant because I ate some of it. I thawed it out and then cut it up, the roast and the potatoes smaller, added all the fixings, and I added uh, beef stock and vegetables and everything else and it is i smell it it's my mississippi pot roast i can almost smell it too i bet that is going to be so good it's so good so in louisiana back in 1996 okay let me back up before then uh how how much time do we have am i going too long let's see we're 14 minutes in i want to keep it less than 30 minutes so i mean so so this is what People just think you're right, and then you get songs cut, and your songs are well known, and that's it. It's, yeah. It, for me, it was a spiritual journey. So for me, so let's go back. So way back, years and years and years ago, my friends Joby and Cheryl Brady would go and preach for a, an African American preacher in West Virginia, 
who just had a little church, but they would, they were my friends. So they would bring his cassettes from his preaching on their bus. And his name was little known man named T.D. Jakes. Oh yeah. And I would listen to those cassettes and I would cry and cry and cry. And one of them I would listen to over and over again was from a Wednesday night that he had, and he called it Lord Untangle Our Eyes. And I would just listen and there was some kind of connection. So he had a, he had a Sunday school lesson called Woman Thou Art Loosed. Oh yeah. He grabbed a hold of people and he began to go to little motel banquet rooms with, you know, 40, 50, then 100 and 150 women and teach from his Sunday school lesson, Woman Thou Art Loose. And I would begin to follow him around, especially with Joby and Cheryl Brady. I would follow him around. He didn't even know my name, but he just knew this white boy was following him around and I would hold his microphone cord. He was larger back then and he was a big sweaty man and I would wipe his neck down and oh my God. He didn't even have a wireless microphone. I would hold his water and you know, they're Pentecostal. If someone fell out, I'd catch them, you know, throw a like, modesty cloth over them, all that stuff. And, but I was, his word, God's word in him was changing my life. Mm -hmm. so I bet. I, 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 and so after one of those meetings, I went with Cheryl Brady and I, I went to San Francisco and I was on the same plane with her. And I said, Cheryl, we got to write that message. Woman Thou Art Loose. She says, how are you going to write Woman Thou Art Loose in a song? And I said, here's how. And so I sang a chorus to her. She said, okay, let's write the verses. So I pulled out the Bible from Matthew. I think it was the book of Matthew. And we wrote verses and a bridge to it. And, and then he hit. He hit as big as in magazine covers, Time Magazine. Yeah, absolutely, he did. Instagram. You know, he's filling arenas. And then he, and Woman Thou Art Loose sold millions. And then he said, I'm going to make it into music. And he searched the earth to find the Woman Thou Art Loose song. And I'm like, we wrote it. And I sent it to him. Or it was Cheryl sent it to him. Somebody, one of us sent it to him. And I heard that he had 200 entries. Remember, he did not know my name. I heard he had 200 entries for this song that he was going to do live at the Superdome in your state where you are right now. And he picked our song. I don't have one song recorded before that, even though I've been writing for eight years. He picked our song. It was on that album. I think it sold a million copies. It was on that live album of the Superdome, Woman Thou Art Loose, three times. It was on the, I think, five times platinum video, I think, two times. It was on the best of the 10 best song, gospel songs of the debt of the 90s. It was on that with Billboard's album. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. on lots of best of projects. And um, and it was like a big giant pop hit or country hit. It changed my life forever. I since, bet. Since then, my songs were recorded by CeCe Winans and Vicki mm -hmm. Winans, Winans and Beverly Crawford and Dottie Peoples and Micah Stampley and Louisiana's own Bishop Paul Morton and a bunch of white people too. <laughs> So if you watch those Gaither videos, like all those people and all the choirs, the Christmas. Yeah. So, but it started out, he did not know my name was Jeff Ferguson. Now I know him. I've been in his home. I've opened up for him. And but but back then, and I was recording my songs 10 times, but back then he didn't know that the song he picked was from that white boy. That was what an interesting out. thing. And when he figured that out, when I mean yeah, did he? I don't know if he still knows it. I oh, how he that? knows that 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 kid following yeah, him around was. serving him. Yeah, I don't know if he knows who I am, and he knows I'm the song. You know, I'm a songwriter, and that he records my songs. He, you know, in fact, he's flown me in and put me in the studio with Israel and other people to uh, yeah. write for his albums. That he would read his, his manuscripts from his books, and we'd write them. So now he knows me, but. But I don't know to this day if he knows that I was that kid following him around, serving him before anybody knew who he was. That's so funny. But you know it. And you know God did that open door for you because, yeah. I mean, woman thou art loose just like an air. I mean, books, sermons, music. I mean, that everybody knows woman thou art loose. Everybody. And, yeah, everybody. Yeah. And, 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 and for the African-American world, whether they go to church or not, everybody knows it. 
Yeah. Yeah, everybody knows it. So it's just been a huge door opener for me. It's really, yeah. it really was a career maker for songwriting and music. Yeah, I bet. That's incredible. So what are you seeing that you said earlier that good things are happening? I can't remember how you said it, but, you know, we live in a world and, you know, you and I both are around Christian things and we see the good things that are happening in our world. And so as Christians, we're looking for our purpose and we're looking for our way to impact the world. And we're, we're looking for, um, you know, something that makes our life matter. And a lot of people struggle with the topic of purpose and knowing what God's called them to do. So what do you say to someone? And they're like, man, the world is a mess. What should I do? What do you say about purpose and seeking God for um, that giftedness that intersects with that faith and you begin to walk in his purpose for your life? Well, first of all, I believe we have to come down to the fact that we all have a purpose. We all mm -hmm. have an assignment. This is why I'm, I don't want to judge anybody else who's not, but this is why I'm pro-life. Because mm -hmm. before we were formed, before he formed us in our mother's womb, mm -hmm. he had plans for us. He knew us by name. And so that's why our ministry supports um, a beautiful, uh, the pregnancy center here in Winter Park where I live. Uh, but I believe in that because we were all were born with a purpose. We all mm -hmm. were born with an assignment. And first of all, we have to know that. The second thing we have to know is that when we finally step into that call, I know the call of God on my life because I asked God and he laid it on my heart through like two things are my assignment. Number one, to lead people into God's presence. Mm -hmm. Number two, to put value on people. And yeah. I learned that through asking God and knowing and figuring it out um, through my ministry and our ministry in prisons. The Lord spoke to my heart to put value on his daughters. So I began, that began to evolve through homeless ministry, through everything we do. It's to, now it's to 50 and over. We have a wonderful growing ministry called The Vow, Voices of Wisdom to 50 and over to uncover the wells of the callings and the assignments and the anointing in people's lives. Because, you know, there you can age out of ministry, but not in God's idea, but in man's right. idea, but not in God's idea. So once you find your purpose and your assignment and you through you find it by doing opportunities that God brings into your life and through the relationships that God brings into your life, like woman, thou art loose. I didn't know I'd write that song. I didn't know that I'd be ghostwriting for ministers all over, you know, some of the most famous. I didn't know that, you know, but but through just obeying that next thing in front of you mm -hmm. it opens up your purpose and your assignment. And once you know your purpose and an assignment, Beth, you cannot give up on it. Now, yeah. your, your temporary assignment in that particular moment or at that church or in that state or with these people might, might come to an end because it might be fulfilled. But the call, you can fail 25, 100 times. But to be successful in fulfilling your assignment, you cannot give it up. You got to get back up and try again and keep finding a way to fulfill the assignment and the call of God on your life, because we all have one. We are all ministers. Well, that's true. And you said at best, I think sometimes it's that next best step. And we get confused with the five year plan, which is good to have nothing wrong with that. But I, I think sometimes, you know, we get distracted by good things and instead of living God's best things. And I think sometimes that requires waiting. What if you're not hearing from God? How do you wait patiently? That's a fruit of the spirit. How do you encourage people to wait on the voice of God before we jump ahead of him and do 15 other things when he's getting us ready for that perhaps one or two things? Our, if you're an idea person like I am, yeah, great ideas every other morning, you know, and yeah. you've got to discern is this connected to my assignment? Is this connected to my purpose? Is this a distraction? Is this a hobby that I can do on the side? Even if it's a money-making hobby, can I do this on the side and still be okay with my purpose and my assignment? You got to bring all that into it. If for, and I know we say things like God spoke to me, God said this to me. And often that's not words. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a knowing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This, I know in my heart, that I need to do this. 
Mm-hmm. I know in my heart, I don't need to do this or I need to stop doing this. Mm-hmm. It's knowing uh, those that are led by the spirit of God. It's a leading our mm-hmm. sons of God, child heirs of God, even if you're a girl, you know, we're child heirs of God. So there is a leading, there is a knowing. And when, when we when we get the experience of hearing and obeying God, hearing from God has three aspects, hearing, obeying, and then God rewarding our obedience. Mm-hmm. We don't need yeah. to be hearers of the word only, but doers. Yeah. So, uh, so ha- what, you just got to obey that next knowing, that next leading that comes mm-hmm. into your life. Let's say you're at church and, um, and, uh, and you see on the screen, okay, they're doing a missionary trip to Indonesia. And you're like, well, I kind of feel like I need to go. And then you go and your heart is broken open with an orphanage there. And before you know it, you may, you know, you may uh, work in real estate, but before you know it, you have this burden and this calling mm-hmm. to support these 25 children in this orphanage. And you find a way to do it and it becomes your ministry. So yeah. you just do the next thing. You follow that leading, you follow that knowing and you obey it. Does that yeah. make sense? It does. And sometimes it is your passion and it is your purpose and it is your giftedness. But sometimes it's really what bothers you and what keeps you up at night. And it's the things that you see wrong in the world. Yeah. Sometimes you see what's wrong in the world and maybe you're the one to come in and bring some right to that wrong. That's so true. Yes, 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 yes. So you've been in in television for how long? Oh, television a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of years, really. I I was a writer prior to that and a speaker. And then we went digital and did a lot of interviews and things like that for, I guess, three years now. Well, I I think you're doing a phenomenal job and it takes it takes um, resilience. It takes faith. It takes waking up with heartbreak and thinking I, I i'm insecure i don't have what it takes yeah. i'm too old i'm too fat mm-hmm. i'm too whatever it might be i'm I, I, i'm not popular enough people don't it takes crucifying all of that climbing up on the altar and saying god this is all i got to work with take yeah. me breathe yeah. your life through me and use me for your purpose and he has a way of doing it we just got to keep obeying god uses there's a scripture that says god uses the uncomely that means the unpretty god has a way of no fan you're beautiful but but so many of us aren't but god has a way of choosing people that we would never pick yeah so true so true you know, one of your songs is uh, there's power in the name of Jesus. There is power, you know, right? Is that that's one of yeah. yours? Well, it's not the newer one. It's the one that came out before that, that all the choirs did. Like, yeah, tons and tons. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is hope. Lakewood did it a lot. Uh, there, yeah. is hope, there is strength. There is victory to claim. It was a big radio hit. There is healing in his holy presence. There is power in his name. So, um, well. But I think that I think the message there is when all else you have, if you cry out to the name of Jesus, you know, then, you know, if you don't know what to do, you can always do that. Right. Pray. Cry out to the name of Jesus. Cry out to the name of Jesus. Oh, we have his word. Yeah. We have his name. We have his spirit going before us. I am telling you, there is nothing, Beth, there's nothing that I cannot do. There's nothing that you cannot do. When God gives you a burden, when God opens up a door, no matter how tiny it is, if yep. we are faithful, there we have the ability to do it. I remember early on in my albums that I would have in my songwriting, I would, there would be these skilled, skilled musicians who would have the ideas. And probably in the 90s, I said, I like my idea. And I started giving myself permission to have an opinion mm. in the midst of these of greatness of these others' opinions. And I was always right. I mean, there might have been five way, right ways to do it, but mine was always one of the five. And mm-hmm. it would always work. It was always great. Now, when I co-write with some of the world's greatest musicians, 
They use my melodies. They use my arrangements. They use my ideas because we've got to believe that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And you spoke into that and spoke up for that. And sometimes God wants us to develop that inner strength because he's using that to come out within us, like you said at the beginning. And I think that's, you know, sometimes, you know, I tell people confidence comes from doing things that require confidence and we know where our confidence comes from. But your confidence comes by doing things that require you to use that confidence. That's right. And having the faith, if you don't have faith in yourself, have faith that I can do all things through Christ. Yes. Strengthens me. And that word Christ is not Jesus last name. It's all that he is. It's the yeah. anointing and it's the anointed one and his anointing that dwells within us. Scripture says the anointing abides. It's with us every morning. Hey, look at that dog. It's with us every day of our lives. Everything we do, everywhere we go, we have that equipping from the yeah. power of God. Oh, thank God for that too. Because we, <laughs> if we go, uh, yeah, it, going out into this world, we got to armor up, kind of like what your first prayer was. We got to armor up and go out. But boy, when we're armored, we're 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 good to go. We can we can tell those fiery darts where to go back to in the name of That's Jesus. Right. Ooh, the, there's power in His name when we use His name. When yeah. we breathe His name. Now, people say His name in what my dad called in vain or mm -hmm. casually everywhere or with mm -hmm. a curse word but when people who have faith in his name yeah when we say his name it carries the authority of heaven absolutely every, every bit of it yeah well we're gonna have to wrap it up there we could talk all day but we'll just have to come back and do this again we gotta but do it and I'll, have, I'll try to be technically prepared that's okay. You did. You did good. I'm glad we, we got it to work. But thank you so much for uh, coming on and sharing your story. Thank you so much for what you're doing in Dallas and Orlando and in between and all of your music. And we'll tell everybody um, that you can go to jeffferguson.com Jeff and he's got all of his music there. He's got where he's going, his travels and what all he's doing. Yeah. And, um, he's going to have the scribe at his church here soon, yes. which is going to be exciting. Yeah. At our vow meeting with, with, um, Paul and Annette, we're so excited. Paul Pitts. Yes. Very excited. They're powerful people. I love they are them. powerful people. And the scribe TV is going to be awesome. Incredible. And you're going to get in on that. We're going to yeah. all get behind that effort because, um, I believe, I believe God's doing something really good. Well, Jeff, thank you for joining us. Thank you for uh, getting through that technical challenge. You did it. And uh, <laughs> it was great talking to you. And um, thank you so much. It's you too. And you enjoy that Mississippi pot roast. It's going to be good. I can't... Ooh, it's going to be good. I wish we were here to have some. I know. It sounds so good. I'll have to make one. <laughs> yes, absolutely. All right. You have a great week. It was great talking you. to you. I we'll be in touch soon. You too. Bye-bye.